Hi, my name's Nicholas Crimes. I'm an anaesthetist in Melbourne, Australia. This is another short video to illustrate the use of the vortex in clinical practice, this time in the setting of an elective case in the operating theater. The patient is a 25 year old woman having a laparoscopy for a gynecological procedure. She has no significant past medical history and she has been assessed as having a normal airway. There is no expectation that she'll be difficult to intubate. This video is a recreation with actors playing the parts of the clinicians. But in the words of Jack Bauer, events occur in real time. Hold that mask firmly on your face. A few more big breaths. Internal oxygen is good. We're all for oxygenating. You ready to go, sir? Yeah. Okay, we're going to drift you off to sleep now. You might feel a little bit of a cold feeling up your arm. You'll start to get very sleepy in a moment. The next thing you know, we'll be finished. 150 of propofol. Can you open your eyes for me? Open your eyes. Okay, and that's 50 of lucky. It's a little bit hard to mask that way. I'll give you seven. I'll just do two hands. Wow. No, not there. Just not, not. I have an R anyway, Sure. Again? Yeah. Yeah. No. Might be a little bit of trouble here. Okay. Uh, no, is that anyway? Yeah, Can you start running me through the optimization strategies for face masks? Yeah, sure. Okay. Manipulation, head and neck. Uh, we're in the second position, I've got jaw thrust on. Manipulation, larynx. Uh, not relevant. Manipulation, device. Manipulation, device, we've got two handed technique. Adjuncts. Uh, we've got nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal. Size and type. Uh, we change the size of mask when we're oxygenating. So that's the good seal there. Yep. Uh, suction. Suction, we haven't sucked down for some good It's been about a minute since the rock went in at this point, and the hero says so she should be well relaxed. Okay. Not getting CO2, not getting chest rise. Sats is still 98. Okay. That's an optimal attempt at um, mask ventilation. So, no point in going back to that. Can I have a laryngoscope? Let's not look down. Okay, laryngoscope. Okay. Um, I had not expected her to be difficult, but she's a great for that. So, what I'm seeing is. Um, but um, just hand on the thyroid cartilage yeah. for me, just push. That's not really making any difference. Not at all. Can I have a, a bougie and I have a mill blade, thanks. Sure. Jen, could you um hit the buzzer please? We're having a bit of trouble here. Adjuncts, 
are not relevant. Size and type. Size and type. We've changed to a different size of um, laryngeal mass. Um, suction that we've done already. And pharyngeal muscle pain. We'll relax. The only thing we have up our sleeves is what will happen with this again? It is. Uh, Jeff, not again for pharmacy. Okay, that's going to take too long. We, we've failed optimal temporal laryngoscopy, optimal temporal face mask, optimal temporal LMA. We need to cut the neck. That's still not yet, but we, there's nothing else we can improve, and she's paralysed. In this example, the clinicians involved in the case first have an optimal attempt at face mask ventilation whilst waiting for the muscle relaxant to take effect. When this is unsuccessful, they move to an optimal attempt at intubation, and when this also fails, an optimal attempt at inserting a laryngeal mask airway. Even though the oxygen saturations remain high in this young, well, elective surgical patient, the Vortex Cognitive tool facilitates the team's recognition that alveolar oxygen delivery cannot be achieved by any of the three non-surgical airway techniques and that the only remaining option to deliver oxygen to the alveoli is an emergency surgical airway. The issue of reversing induction agents such as opioids or rocuronium using drugs such as naloxone or sugamidex falls within the optimization strategy of pharyngeal muscle tone for face mask ventilation. If successful, the patient may regain the ability to maintain their own airway and resume spontaneous ventilation. Unfortunately, the primary induction agent itself cannot usually be reversed, and so the time to recovery of spontaneous airway maintenance and ventilations is unknown. A decision, therefore, has to be made about whether the patient is likely to experience critical desaturation before this occurs and whether an emergency surgical airway is required.